How's it going everybody? Rocky Mountain EDC here. Today I have another overview and impressions video on a CRKT knife. That CRKT knife is going to be the CRKT Fossil. Now the Fossil is not a new knife. It has been around for quite some time and it is a Flavio and Coma design. So this is actually a mass produced version of the knife designers um, actual custom made knife that he made for himself. So the Icoma design uh, for this mass produced knife is essentially following the general idea and the concepts of his uh, self made uh, custom knife for himself. But as we get into this mass-produced knife, we're going to see that the CRKT Fossil, although very intriguing, misses some marks, and it could be improved for sure. But nonetheless, I think that the CRKT Fossil is a very interesting knife and does make a very cool addition to anyone's collection. If you end up enjoying this video, give it a like and subscribe to the Rocky Mountain EDC channel for more videos like this one. Thanks. So, like I said, the CRKT Fossil is a mass-produced version of Flavio Acoma's designed uh, knife. However, it is going to have components that are going to be making it a little bit more easier to uh, mass-produce. So, the design itself is a very large knife with an almost four inch blade um, with a reverse recurve design. It does have this um, form of almost like a Spyroco thumb hole design. So something similar in terms of how you would open up the knife. And I will say it actually feels quite comfortable for that opening mechanism. So very interesting in terms of uh, the size of the blade itself. It is going to have that recurve design. Um, it is going to be a hollow grind. So despite it being very thick behind the edge, it is going to be a hollow grind. Um, so it should be decently slicey for um, what you're going to get out of the knife. Now, some of the things that kind of draw this knife back is going to be the steel. So this is going to be an 8CR13 MOB steel, which is a budget steel. It's not going to have great edge retention. It's going to be fine in the categories of easy sharpening, um, and it's going to be stainless. So it is going to be pretty good against corrosion resistance, but it's not going to hold an edge for very long, and it's not going to be very tough, which is a possible drawback on the CRKT Fossil, which we'll get into later at the end of the video. Nonetheless, a very interesting looking um, knife in general. And the name kind of says the description of the knife, Fossil. It does appear as though it was dug up out of the ground and like it's a fossil. And I think where this knife appeals the most is in its aesthetic appeal. It is very interesting, something very unique from Kershaw. Um, and it is in the budget category of knives. Um, I think it might be a little bit more overpriced for the materials you get. But overall, I think that the construction and the look is, is very nice. And I think um, a lot of thought went into this. And again, this, this was based off of um, the original knife designer's um, idea. But the handle is a uh, hammered stainless steel handle, and it is going to be, um, we could call this a liner lock, but really it's a frame lock. Um, I mean, even though um, it does have these G10 overlays on here, um, it's not really contributing a whole lot to the integrity of the structure, more for looks, but really this is essentially a, a frame lock. Now those G10 handle scales do kind of act as a um, overstop so that you don't over 
um, extend that lock bar um, when you're opening up. So it is kind of a debatable, but as far as a liner lock would go, it has a very thick and strong lock, which is very nice because it is gonna have a little bit more heavy duty capabilities on that. So again, that full stainless steel construction is gonna make it a very heavy knife. Um, so this is going to be um, pretty hefty in the pocket. Um, so it's not gonna be really a great, great knife for EDC. Now, that's not to say that the size itself is bad for EDC. The Spyderco Paramilitary 2 is also a larger size knife. Not as big as the uh, CRKT Fossil, but it is a larger size knife, but this is gonna be a lot lighter, a lot easier to carry. So that is a <laughs> slight drawback of the design. So it is gonna be a little heavy. It does have a deep carry pocket clip, which is kind of nice. Um, so it does kind of have that um, EDC uh, mindset in in thought in the design and you're gonna have just a very little bit sticking out of your pocket um, but nonetheless nonetheless that is a nice feature the g10 is gonna be very grippy it's gonna be very textured so you can see all these different grooves and different uh, kind of rivets in there and you give it a very good texture this is a very grippy knife um, and it looks as though it is very rough. And I will say that um, it is a little rough on the pocket. They do actually um, flatten down the G10 to make it smooth right under the clips. That is nice, but there is a chance that this other parts of the G10 are going to scrape up your pocket. There is gonna be this, uh, I'm guessing either G10 or plastic, other type of plastic um, kind of full backspacer here. So you are gonna, uh, know that the blade is going to be protected inside of a full uh, closed um, construction there um, so you don't have to worry about anything getting there and dinging up your blade too bad. It does have a little bit of jimping um, right here on the spine so that is actually a very, a very good spot. I think they place that well and you can choke up here there's no jimping up there. It does have a 90 degree spine at this portion here right above the thumb opening hole um, and it does give you a lot of different options for how you would like to grip the knife. So again, you do have this thumb opening hole for an opening mechanism, but I would say that the most comfortable and the main way of opening up the knife is the flipper. And that flipper is very good. Um, it's placed well, very easy to actuate due to it um, being on ceramic caged ball bearings. So we can see here that it does have um, this little symbol here, denoting that it does have ball bearings um, in the pivot uh, to help give it that really smooth opening action. And it does have pretty drop shut um, action as well due to the blade just being very large and very heavy. So overall, that is some of the properties of this knife. Now, some of the drawbacks is this is a more budget sided knife. It is gonna run for about 80 to $100. However, for what, for what you get, you're not getting a very great um, steel and the knife really isn't that uh, great for everyday carry for it being a little heavier. Um, that is kind of a drawback. What I would like CRKT to do is to come out with a more premium version of this knife. Um, I think that would be really nice, an upgraded steel, uh, maybe a titanium construction. I mean, we could go in all different directions in terms of upgrading this knife, but I think even different uh, blade uh, shapes or styles on, uh, on this knife would be nice as well. Um, now, they do offer the straight edge here and a serrated version. Um, the serrated version is not, uh, your typical serrations are actually very large serrations. Um, in my opinion, they would be a little bit more useful, a little less aggressive, um, but they do offer that version as well. And I believe they also offer different uh, colored versions. They do have some type of uh, painted coated version as well. But some type of upgrade or other versions of this knife because I really do enjoy the aesthetics and the overall design of the knife. It would just be nice to have a little bit of um, upgraded materials 
um, for what you get. Um, nonetheless, I think the CRKT Fossil is a very intriguing knife and pretty cool uh, talking piece in anyone's collection. Um, if you get the opportunity to hold this or handle it, I definitely would, um, as it does um, have a different feel in hand than you might expect uh, just looking at a video or a photo. Um, so that is the overview and some of my impressions on the CRKT Fossil. Again, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the Rocky Mountain EDC channel. Thanks.